He's sleeping in the water. Don't do it. I'm going to lose you to drowning. Yes, wake up. Hello, everybody. Gray still plays, and we're back with more Taito Ecology. No time for BS. Today, we're over here back in the rainforest, and I wanted to do this for a couple of reasons. One, I wanted to get to see the map, see how the water has changed in this particular zone. You can actually see it kind of flowing down the stream here. That's really nice. See how these different trees and plants have changed. And I got to tell you, the plants and trees are looking really good. You can actually see... I think there was a right over here i can't remember if this is a papyrus yes a papaya tree i'm sorry not a papyrus tree <laughs> you can actually see the fruits it is fruiting i think if we click on it it will actually say fruiting and the number of fruits that are on there which is awesome and one of the things i want to do is unlock the final zones here and we should have oops, and we should have plenty of title coins to do this we have, yes, we have plenty of Taito coins. We still have 640 left. So now we have a huge zone. We have 300, 300 energy. And we have a whole world to populate. So let's start right away with that. Now, I'd like to go through here real quick and just kind of see if there's any new plants or anything. And it, I don't think that there is, but it's always good to just double check because you never know. They can end up slipping something by me. Not that I would have a problem with that in any way, shape, or form. Doesn't look like there is. So we will use what we have. See how our populations are doing over here. Yeah, there's not really too many tapirs or capybaras. And I think that the armadillos are even getting a little... A little lessened these days in the populace. Question is, do I want to go this way or this way? I think we're going to go to the left. That seems to be what I'm doing with my other zone, and it's working out just fine. So I'll continue to do that here. One of the things I do want to make sure to do, though, is we want to make sure to put down some additional critters so that there's always plenty to go around. Put down some of these guys. A couple of tortoises right over here by the waterline. I'm sure they would enjoy getting wet every once in a while. These little mice-like dudes right over here. There we are. I believe it's said that these guys can get out of control if there's too many of them. I still have not seen that as a problem. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a bunch of them down and see what happens. If our entire ecosystem gets taken over by little rat guys, I'm sure... <laughs> I'm sure you all think that that's enjoyable anyway. <laughs> that would be pretty funny to be fair. Agoutis climbing up the kapok trees, taking them down to the ground, gnawing on everything in sight, breaking through, breaking through the barriers, busting through the walls here. <laughs> Why not? Don't let, don't let me tell you how to live your life, Agouti. Go, go forth and prosper. All right, let's get some more plants. And let's make sure that we get some of these butterflies down. Let's take a look at these butterflies with the new textures. Ooh, hold on. Get right around here. Take a look at them from this side. And if you, I think if I we looked at the underside of the wings, let me see if I can get down here low enough. You can actually see how cool that looks. It almost looks like um, like a starry sky or something under the wings. Quite interesting. Oh, we got something going on here. What is this? Is he just running to run? Oh no! Did that? <laughs> Did he? Did he fall asleep or... Alright, he looks like he's fine. So I guess he's just wanting to head to the wall and stretch a little bit. No big deal. Back over here to our plant types. I do like these papaya trees. And so do everyone else, it seems. They've got plenty to eat. A couple of pineapples over here as well. And... Yeah, a strangler fig is probably pretty good as long as I can actually set it down. Let's see if I can get this into a decent spot. Right about over here should be fine. There we are. Oh, let's go ahead and speed up. I always forget to do that. We want to make sure that we're regenerating energy as quickly and efficiently as possible. We do have some mushrooms over here, so we can keep those. We can keep those. And we actually have quite a bit of earthworms over here, too. Oh! Got a tapir running around over there. See if I can put some frogs over here by this water line. There we go. And eh, more armadillos. Can never have enough armadillos. 
right? Appear, armadillos, go forth and prosper in this beautiful, wondrous rainforest that we have created. Some ants, too. I'd like to get some of those down. There's an ant pile over there. I'm going to put one kind of over here, I think. And we'll get some bigger critters over here, too. These marsh deer would probably be perfect as a bigger critter. And for the jaguars and stuff like that, we'll probably put down one of them. Actually, I may even put down like more deer i think i might put down like three sets of deer over here to really see if they can maybe like interpopulate or something no what's going on down here oh they actually fall into the water now if you remember originally when a creature kind of walked across the water he's <laughs> sleeping in the water don't do it i'm gonna lose you to drowning yes wake up if you have the type of narcolepsy that causes you to fall asleep in the water, you will not last long in the rainforest. Get out! <laughs> if you remember, the animals originally just kind of walked across the water as if though they were Moses. Um, see, now that is more like what you saw, but you could see his little legs were actually partly in the water, and that's good. I'm glad to see that they actually go down into the water. Now, that armadillo that went down into the water is straight up gone. I don't know if we'll ever see him again. Maybe he'll come out the other side. Maybe not. <laughs> More deer. Right here. Oh, deer. There you go. Can never have too many of you guys. All right. More plants. We definitely need some little plants here as well. Want to get more of these orchids for sure. Because they are lovely. And of course, ferns. I'm going to put these ferns right on top of these deer, actually. So they have plenty to eat. Because I'd hate for them to uh, kind of be wandering around and not have enough to snack on. There's some more for you. Right about there. And we'll put some more ferns even right over here by this big old strangler fig tree. Strangler fig tree is fruiting, it says. Curious if you can see fruit on it. Oh, you sure can. Look at that right there. Very neat. Love it. You can see the fruit on the strangler fig tree. A couple of zebra plants would be nice as well. Put those kind of by the water line right about there we go. Helcionus. Those are neat. Those are actually right in front of us if we take a look. I wonder if I can get these set up anywhere. Right over there apparently is fine. Excellent. Oh, we've got a... Uh, Got a jaguar flowing around over here. Sounds like a new growl, actually. Much more realistic growl, too. Holy cow. Think about the jaguars for a second here. Jaguars are fierce predators. They are carnivores who eat nothing but meat. There are virtually no animals that a jaguar won't eat. Oh, my God. <laughs> Their strong jaws can even pierce tortoise shells and crocodile skin. Jaguar versus a crocodile, huh? Hmm. Jaguars are apex predators, which means that they have no natural enemies. Baby jaguars may fall prey to large carnivores, though this is uncommon. The biggest th threat to jaguars are human poachers. Jaguars are built for strength, not speed. Though they can run very quickly for short distances, they usually lie in wait for their prey and then leap out of hiding to take them by surprise. The jaguar usually kills its prey by biting the back of the neck or skull, instantly killing it. Even crocodiles are no match for a jaguar if they aren't expecting the attack. Cool! Holy cow! Notes. Most jaguars have yellow coats with black spots. Some jaguars, however, are almost black with barely visible spots. This is called melanism and is fairly common in jaguars. Black jaguars are often mistaken and called black panthers, though this is incorrect. While melanism can occur in most warm-blooded animals, there has never been a recorded case of an actual melanistic panther. <laughs> a black melanistic panther. That would be, I guess, redundant? I don't know. Well, we got uh, this little, this jaguar here is running. He's running. Running straight through all of the delicious meat. All right, yes, don't touch my marsh deer. The marsh deer must continue. Must continue on. In fact, we're going to put one more marsh deer right here. Now. Now we've got quite a few marsh deer. Hopefully, they don't all get horribly, horribly slaughtered. Our health 
of our biome is not bad. It's 97. I think that's the average. I think it takes the average of your entire biome and it gives you kind of like this assigned amount. So 90, 97 for the average is not bad, I think, at all. This particular biome here is 98. So we're doing fine. As long as we keep it in the 90s, I think we're going to be just fine. Our detrius level is at 1, so that's perfect. That's exactly what we want. I'm going to go ahead and put down an ocelot over here. I don't mind having a little bit of a predator around. And I guess since they're going to be over here, I'll put down some of these guys as well. About here and here, probably. This big old tapir is walking around. You know what we don't have? We don't have any peck areas. Um, and I do want to get some of those down, actually. Probably right over here. You know what? Actually closer right over here. There we go. Let's see, what, see how big these guys are. I'm kind of curious. Um, all right, they're about the size of the marsh deer. They're a little bit shorter, but obviously they're pretty gosh dang stocky. If we click on one, see what it has to say about it. Peccaries do not have very good eyesight, but have excellent hearing. They use different calls and their scent glands to identify and communicate with each other. Huh. All right. In the wild, baby peccaries look very different from adults. While adults are grayish brown with a white collar around their necks, babies are more orange or yellow color with a dark stripe down their back. This helps babies blend in and avoid predators from their most vulnerable years. I think I remember reading that somewhere, actually. Zoom out a little bit here and continue to put down some more plants for everyone. I think some trees would be nice. Let's go ahead and move over here. This little flame tree... Now, it's not like the biggest tree in the world, but it does have both fruit and leaves. So, it's good pretty much all around for food. Go ahead and put one over here as well. Cast a little bit of shade for anyone that wants to use it. And probably one right over here. Now, let's go and get a big old tree up. And you remember what the biggest and the most powerful of all Amazon trees is. It is this Kapok tree. I'd like to get one of those down. And that's what we'll be doing. Oh, is that a little frog hopping around right there? Yep, there he is. Taking a taking a a trek. Now, if you remember here, the animals just got some updates on their movement and their animations. And we're getting to see that, which is nice. Let's see if I can find a place for this K-Pok tree. Probably have to move back slightly over here and possibly put it down. Let's see. Let's try this. There we go. We have kind of a a floating root system here. <laughs> the root system has exploded out of the ground and is heading toward the water. Oh, we got 34 more title coins. That's good because the next time I want to open up the rest of the grazert and make sure that that's ready to go. This little deer is going right underneath this tree here. Let's explore underneath the tree. Anything going on inside? Oh, there's... There's an armadillo inside the tree. That's interesting. Zoom on out over here. Probably put a, a strangler fig on this side, I think. This way all these different little animals and such have something to eat. See how close I can get it. There we are. Yeah, that's perfect. May even put one more down. Strangler figs are great trees for this environment here that I'm seeing because they don't take up like a massive, massive area like the Kapok tree. But they provide like decent shade and they have like good fruit and leaves as well so they're good to eat from by everything it looks like i do want to get a pollinator over here so let's go ahead and put down some blue morphos put those guys right about here there we go they should pretty much be able to pollinate everything in the immediate area let's go take a run through our our rainforest real quick and see how it looks. Let me go ahead and go ahead and zoom all the way in for this while we kind of glide on through as the owl bot here, taking a look at all the different little plants and creatures. Oh, we got a we got a great shot of the underside of the wings from here. Look at that. Take a look at all the little creatures here that we put down. Little tortoise here, kind of looming next to the the shrubbery, maybe having something to eat, like the little tortoise walk there. See what's happening over on this island. Cotamundi. 
just kind of padding. This jaguar flying around, trying to attack this here tree. Not even a tree is safe from the apex predator of the jaguar. <laughs> it's said that they have no known enemies, so I guess they're I guess they'll take out even a tree if they want to. All right, that, that was a pretty good trek through our area. Let's go ahead and blast on through here. Hit the hit the shift key and you can sprint and we can really fly through. There we go. Got a hill over here that we can take advantage of as well. We've got a little bit of energy. I say let's go ahead and use it up real quick. Go from the top down menu here and make sure to put down some more plants. And maybe Helciona. There we go. Heliconia rather. Some orchids are always lovely too. Beautiful plant, those orchids. Always like seeing those guys. Another flame tree right over here next to this kapok tree, I think. And put down a couple of zebra plants over here. We could probably even get some more herbivores on this side because we're getting to the point where we've got quite a few plants going down. We do need some ferns though. Need to make sure that we have plenty of ferns. Ferns are the key to the rainforest here because they are simply delicious and everyone thinks so. All of the animals having their their conferences at least once a month or I don't know maybe it's quarterly they all get together and talk about how delicious the ferns are this time of year. I think some armadillos would be lovely. Drop those guys down. Happy little armadillo. I feel like the Bob Ross of Taito Ecology. It, uh, those of you who actually know who Bob Ross was, he was a painter who, he did like painting tutorials for people. His, his idea was that anyone can learn how to paint. And actually, if you followed the instructions that he gave you, you could actually come out with some really neat stuff. I used to do it as a young kid. And he was the calmest, nicest painter and probably man in the world. He would be painting and he would be talking while he's painting and he was very spontaneous and he was a kind of guy where he would say you know even if you made a mistake you could turn it into something else so he'd be like all right we're gonna put down a a happy little tree right over here oh yeah that tree looks fantastic oh our tree looks looks a little sideways that's fine though because we can turn this tree into a happy little cloud Oh, the cloud is casting a shadow. A shadow on all the happy little animals that's standing beneath it. That's kind of what he was like. He just had this really calm, soothing, guru-style voice. And when you listen to it, you were like, wow, this guy's blood pressure must be like one over two. All right. We are set. Our rainforest and the mist effect is super. Just, I love it. Our rainforest is looking great. In fact, you know what? We have a little bit more energy to use. I'm gonna wrap this up here in a second, but since we have a little bit more energy, let's go ahead and take advantage, guys. There we go, we'll put one of those right over there. And, yep, I'll, you know what? I'll let us get to 15 real quick so I can put down one more set of ferns. There we go, guys. Hope you're enjoying Taito Ecology so far. I'll see you next time. Until then, stay foxy and much love.